Good morning, everybody. It's another new day. We're continuing our journey from Sudbury, Ontario over to Edmonton, Alberta. I dropped by home for a quick reset. My logbooks are ready to go now. It's time to hit the road. We have to deliver in Edmonton, get this load off my trailer, those big reels, right? And then I have to go over to Meadow Lake, load up a load of lumber. That's taking me down into Minnesota. South of Winnipeg, headed west. It makes sense because the sun is in the south. The daylight hours are getting longer though. And that is very encouraging. It means uh, a new year is coming. Well, new year is here already, but for me, the year sort of begins when the snow melts. We're gonna be uh, driving as far as we can today. I'm allowed to drive 13 hours in one day in Canada. I have to do that within 16 hours. From when I start my day to when I end my day has to be no more than 16 hours for those of you not familiar with Canadian hours of service. That should get us to around Lloydminster, Alberta. That's what I'm thinking. That's where I'd like to get to tonight. And that's a long way from here. That's about 1,100 kilometers, 1,200. I might even get past Lloyd, who knows? But Lloyd is the goal. Uh, North Battleford is the consolation. Saskatoon is a fail. I wanna get as far as I can because I want to really, really uh, have as much time as possible for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm unloading this freight in Edmonton. Well, in Nisku, just south of Edmonton. And then I have to run over to Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan, which is a five hour drive. They're open till 10 p.m. And that's in central time. So I'm losing an hour coming from Alberta back into Saskatchewan. So six hours from when I leave uh, Edmonton there. We can't forget that time change. Then I want to get as far towards Minnesota as I can yet. I'm just trying to get as far as I can. I want to make as much as I, as much of this week as I can. Old Blue is scheduled for a service this Friday. So once I'm done this rounder, Old Blue will go into the shop, get a nice detailed bath. Deserves it. The engine will get all its fluids changed out, get greased, get new filters, get screened over by a fine tooth comb. See if there's anything else that I missed that needs to be looked at. But the truck has been doing really good for me. I mean, obviously like knock on wood, but I've been very impressed. I was nervous buying a used truck. I, I want an older truck. That's what I wanted. I wanted a W9. This one came for sale and everything about it looked perfect, right? Nothing looked fishy, but I'm always a little bit nervous. You know, when you buy a used vehicle, or when you buy a used anything, even like a house or anything, there's always the chance that you're just buying someone else's headache. And they've sort of just put lipstick on the pig and made it look nice, but really underneath it's a big old lemon. Not this one. I still talk to the previous owner. He's a really good guy. Doesn't live too far away from me. Lives like two minutes away from me. <laughs> from the same town, same background. And he had all the records to show me that he took care of the truck. He didn't just tell me he took care of it. He had the records to prove it. So he came with the receipts and said, look, I've been taking care of this truck. I've rebuilt the engine. I've done this, I've done that, and I've taken care of it. I was still nervous, but, you know, went through with it, and boy, am I glad that I did. He was an honest man of integrity. And, you know, guys like that, you don't find too often anymore. <laughs> he was just a good guy. Didn't lie about anything. There were a few things that needed to be adjusted on the truck or needed to be looked at or, or fixed. He told me about them. Straight up, said, this, this doesn't work, this needs to be fixed. Uh, this is going, this will need to be replaced. 
but I did this, this, and this. And that's the kind of driver I strive to be too. I don't ever plan on selling Old Blue. But I do take detailed records on absolutely everything that I do to this truck, everything that I add to it. So that, you know, if the, if the time ever did come, it'd be a very sad day, as it was for the previous owner too, when I picked the truck up off his driveway. I could tell it was hard for him to say goodbye to it. But he had his reasons. And I believe they revolved around family reasons to be home. He'd been in Old Blue himself. It wasn't called Old Blue then. I don't know what he called the truck. Probably just the truck. <laughs> but. And he'd been in this truck for eight years. So that's a big part of his life that you know you gotta say goodbye to. And I felt for him a lot. I'm like, man, that must be hard. As excited as I was to take it home, right? To my shop. When you care for a truck that much, for that long, it, it becomes a part of you, right? And he might even be watching this video now, so, hey, how's it going? Told him about my videos and uh, he's commented on a few before. He's a good guy. And it's nice to know that if anything, if I have any questions about the truck, I can always, you know, shoot him a message and, and ask him and uh, he'll, he'll let me know. Cause I'm still getting to know Old Blue. We've been together since May of last year. I guess June, I put her on the road. June, 2022. I think for the most part, all the little things that needed to be looked at, we, we got fixed. She's been doing really good for me. Slowly putting my own, uh, my own touch on the truck, making it my own, adding more lights. That is definitely me. The more lights, the better. Ask my wife, I love lights. Everywhere, in the house, on the truck, everywhere. More lights, the better. More lights, got my new steering wheel in here. This was a gift from Jim, thankful for that. But I love my job. To me, this isn't a job, this is a lifestyle. This is who I am, a big part of who I am. <coughs> Not only am I a son, a brother, a husband, soon to be a dad, I'm also a trucker. That's part of my, that'll always be part of my identity. You can never take that away from me. You can take the truck away from the man. You can't take the truck out of the man though. Is that how the saying goes? You can take the man out of the truck. You can't take the truck out of the man. You guys know what I meant. I may not be a millionaire. I may not own a big yacht in the Caribbean one day. But I'll be happy. Beautiful, beautiful Saskatchewan. Canadian prairies. I'm stopping at the Petro Pass up here in Grenfell. I was gonna go all the way to Balgoni and fuel at the Flying J there, but <laughs> my fuel gauge is going down faster than I thought it would. We're, uh, <laughs> Old Blue's a little thirsty pulling these reels through the prairie wind here, so I, I didn't quite, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna risk it, I'm already at like an eighth of a tank. So Grenfell is right here. This is a newer Petro Pass. It came up, oh, probably like four or five years ago already, but it wasn't here when I started driving, so it's still new to me. How do I get to it? Is this the exit? Yes. 
Yes, this is the exit. It's right there. There's the sign. So they're owned by BVD Petroleum, I think. I don't know if they're owned by them or they're partnered with them. You'll see it on the sign just around the corner here. Right off to the right. Open 24-7. Gas, diesel, convenience store, bistro, restaurant, showers, laundry, Wi-Fi, ATM, lotto. They got everything. I hope they got diesel fuel because I'm going to need a lot of it. I'm I don't usually let my tanks go this low. But my fuel numbers are not going to look so good. They haven't been looking good this whole trip. I've been averaging uh, under 5 miles per US gallon. I got this giant steel parachute behind me. Not only is it, uh, it's not too heavy, but it's, eh, it's heavy enough. It's also just really big. Well, it is what it is. I accepted the load, so it's worthwhile for me. Here it is up here. And they got it around the corner. It's sort of sneaky. You got to know where to go. So how do we... Okay, so the pumps, we got to go around the back and face forward. I don't want to go in backwards. What is this guy doing? He's blocking everything. Do not enter. Do not enter. Well, where are we supposed to enter? Okay, I'm gonna have to go turn around somewhere now. Is the entrance? See, there's all this parking here. Lots. Oh, it's over. There's another entrance over here. Okay, this is new. They made this parking lot bigger, and this entrance is different. That was not like that last time. I don't know when they did that, but. I haven't stopped here in a while. It's not my usual stopping point. So if you're wondering how to get in here, now you know. Way at the far end. For 200 meters, turn right on Great Avenue. Karen, quiet. I'm gonna go get some go-go juice first. And then we gotta book it to Edmonton. That should be enough fuel to get us all the way to Edmonton. Should be. We'll see how the wind treats us on the highway. That wind is just relentless. Lots of parking here though. This was all grass before and the parking lot ended like somewhere around here. And there was maybe like spots for 15 trucks maybe now you could fit probably like oh 50 to 75 trucks in here maybe more oh and people are lining up over there oh okay well i want to go get in line the correct way i guess so there is another entrance on that side over there how confusing is this I'm gonna get in, get in line and not cut the line over here. They've made this really confusing. Wasn't expecting it to be so busy. Now we know. Now you know. Don't go in that entrance over there unless you just want to get to the parking lot. If you want to get to the fuel islands, there's another entrance on this side. And get in line. Don't cut the line. Don't 
don't listen to her. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I'll turn in here. Okay. Huh, a little bit, a little bit too confusing. They changed everything up. This is a totally different stop now. Good for them. Like this is way better. You just got to figure out the parking lot and the pumps a little bit here. <laughs> All right, here's the lineup. expecting to have to wait for fuel here. I thought this was a smaller little truck stop. Not anymore. A guy in front of the guy in front of me played a prank and he turned this nozzle off or he shut the valve off there. I guess he's playing a prank. The guy in front of me couldn't figure it out and he's getting all mad that the pump wouldn't work. So he left. <laughs> and I pull up. I notice that right away. So turned it on. Pump works fine. Just had to open the valve. So this valve here shuts off fuel flow through this pump here. And the guy in front of me couldn't figure it out. Uh, before I could come and tell him, uh, he just took off all mad. And the pump wasn't working. Went around to a different pump. Always make sure that the valve is open. Some guys like to pull pranks and close them. I don't do that. So we bought 675 liters and spent $1,362.91 Canadian. That was from Thunder Bay, Ontario to Grenfell, Saskatchewan. Sneaky guys, you know? Funny guys, funny. <laughs> I didn't see the guy who turned it off, but it had to have been the guy before the guy in front of me. Because for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why the guy in front of me was getting mad at the pump and it's taking forever, right? Was, What's taking so long? And finally, he yeah, leaves in a hurry. I was about to come out and help him. I would have been able to tell him that right away because that's one of the first things I looked for. So, is the valve open? <laughs> oh, well. So, tip to you for the future. When you're fueling, if your pump is not pumping juice, just check to make sure that valve is open. Simple as that. Simple fix. Don't gotta ruin anyone's day. Okay, sun has set. We got a long way to go yet. Price of diesel fuel here is $2.02 .02 per liter Canadian. And 675 liters. 0 0.04 liters, if we're being accurate, which equals 53.7 liters per 100 kilometers, or 53.7 liters per 100 kilometers in US miles per gallon. 53.7 liters per 100 kilometers is 4.38 miles per gallon. Ouch! Can you feel the pain? <laughs> Ah, 4.38 miles per gallon. Woo! We're just gonna pretend we're playing golf and the lowest score wins. We did great. We shall never speak of this. That's a lie, I'm a vlogger, I talk about everything, even the bad days. I like to keep my fuel mileage at about six or higher miles per US gallon. 4.38. Sometimes the wind and the weather and the load just, uh, they don't help you. They drag you down. It is what it is. So I'm making money, so let's get out there. We're not making any money sitting here. Let's get out there.
full of juice. I think this is the best way out of town. Maybe I could have gone that way. You're right, Karen. I'll give you that. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Wonder if it would have been faster going the other way. Like I said before, this is not my usual stop. I don't stop here very often at all. I didn't even know they doubled the size of the truck stop there. And it looks like it's been like that for a little while already. It shows you how often I stop here. I usually go through to the Balgoni Flying J. Couldn't get quite as far. So 675 liters or 178 or 173 gallons, US gallons. And I burnt that in uh, just over 1200 kilometers. Or what would that be? Uh, less than a thousand miles. Canada number one this away. Yes, sir. In 100 meters, turn right on Trans Canada Highway, one. Well, this stop sign's not quite sure. You want me to stop or you know we want me to stop. Are you okay? It's been partying too hard. Look at this guy. Maybe it's supposed to flash like that. Got my attention, right? That's the whole point of it. Dude, your axles are all the way at the back of your trailer. Makes them have to take an even wider turn. All right, let's go. Look at that sky, wow. Look at that dirty windshield. Wow! I got a stone chip in my window last week. And I tried to fix it at home. And it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. I have a windshield repair kit, right? And it fills in the chip so that it doesn't spread or turn into cracks. But you can still see where it was. I thought it would do a little bit better job concealing it. It's right there, right in the middle of the window. Might have to replace the whole window anyways if it cracks out from there. It's trying to avoid that. It is all filled up, so maybe, maybe it'll be okay. We made it. This is Lloydminster. I still have an hour on my clock, so we're gonna keep going even further. I'm gonna surpass our goal for today. It's been a good day, steady driving. Stopped for fuel and a bathroom break, and that was pretty much it. Checked the load a couple of times. Good steady day of hard driving. Keep to the left on Trans Canada Highway, Highway 16. Beautiful 
Alberta. Shining beacon on a hill. We made it. A couple of minutes left on my clock. Almost a full 13 hours of driving. Meters. Turn left on 53 Street, Highway 870. That is that. That was a long day. <laughs> oh, how far did we go today? Let's see. From my location to Steiner. <laughs> 1,220 kilometers. We made the most of this day. Wow. Drove pretty much the full 13 hours. Just barely made it. I had like three minutes left on the clock. Whew. Well, I'll show you where we're at in the morning once the sun comes up. I'll give you a look around here. And uh, I'll take it from there. We'll see you in just a second. Have you ever seen anyone put a jacket on that fast? <laughs> this is where we spent the night. The Petro Pass up on a hill. This was packed last night already, so everyone's been well, everyone who got here before me is pretty much on the road already. Makes sense. So thanks for hanging out with me on this long drive. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>